Okay, we're recording now. Today we're with Gary McEwan, in which probably will be the last episode of Escaping Lockdown. Uh, I'm very privileged to have Gary with us. Uh, Gary is uh, an engine in developing entrepreneurship in Scotland and will definitely have fantastic stories to tell us today. Hello, Gary. Good morning. How did you escape lockdown? Well, lockdown was a, was a real struggle um, for me to uh, get my head around. Uh, I've always believed that, you know, the creation of entrepreneurs is very much a team game. Uh, people sometimes think entrepreneurs like to work in complete isolation when my experience is the very opposite. They actually live and feed off the, the energy from each other. And so the creation of centres of entrepreneurship is the very DNA of what Elevator has been doing. So the notion that we would have to disband effectively and and work from remote locations, dealing with people in a remote manner was completely against and everything we believed, which was about bringing people together to do these things. And so it wasn't a good day. It wasn't a good day. I hoped it wouldn't last too long. It's lasted longer than I ever hoped it would. But we've had to change and adapt um, to the needs of the of the entrepreneurial society in which we live. And so I think we've done that quite successfully, but it, it's taught us a lot, but, you know, it would have been great if it didn't happen, let's just say. And how, and how did you manage to do that? How did you manage to convince the entrepreneurs to carry on kind of a society of entrepreneurs? on uh, I think, well, the first thing was that the needs of the entrepreneurs were changing. You know, our focus had been on how do we get more businesses to actually begin to trade? How do we get more of them to become significant businesses in the future? Whereas the demand was very different. The demand was, how can you help me not have my business go bust because of all of this? Yeah. So we knew that fewer people would begin businesses because they would just be um, probably battening down the hatches for a while. Um, and so we, we knew that our advisory team would see less demand for startups and, and probably less demand for businesses growing unless they were in a, a very specific sector. Mm -hmm. And so our focus had to change into, OK, how can we actually help and guide people to get themselves through this and out of the other end of it? And so many, many things changed, but amongst them would be the notion that in, a, in an advisory kind of context, normally... 90% of a conversation would be about the business and 10% about personal kind of how they personally are getting through issues. Whereas that was kind of turned in its head and we were dealing with a lot of people who were, whose mindset had changed and was in quite a poor place. Mm -hmm. And so it became about how do we keep people energized and give them practical understanding they need to get through this. So yeah, it was, it was all topsy-turvy, but we've changed around and, and, and been more of a support to the business community as opposed to endeavouring to, you know, help them to grow and uh, or start. And do you have any kind of special story, uh, without telling names, of course, some people that were kind of devastated and how did you manage to bring them back on board? Well, the, the advisory teams, um, we have a variety of them who deal with different types of startups. So that there are literally dozens of them all working from home, taking calls, you know, phones ringing nonstop with people who are, you know, don't know what to do next. Um, but these range from, you know, businesses that are quite carefully considering where they stand right now to, in complete honesty, Ignacio, people who are quite clearly borderline suicidal. Uh, with the situation so we've had a number of you know instances across Scotland where people are genuinely at the end of their tether but um, apart from anything else you know we have to also support our advisory teams because they are fully qualified business advisors but they are dealing with situations that they have never come across before people who are you know in a very kind of dark place and um, because of the lockdown so I think our role has been to try and give some sort of uplift to what is a very often depressing situation for, you know, a new or just a gradually emerging startup business that, that has yet to gain the sort of the foothold in the market it needs. And the last thing it, it needed was a lockdown. And does, did it help 
for entrepreneurs to be in contact with one another. I guess it helps when you can kind of even share the load of the problem. Yeah, um, absolutely. We One of our specialities, I think, is running accelerator programs. Um, we decided very early on that these had to continue. Uh-huh. And so we are currently running uh, a student accelerator for the universities in Aberdeen and the, one, the ones in uh, Dundee, including St Andrews. Um, and so yesterday I had the pleasure of speaking to 36 student entrepreneurs who are doing a virtual accelerator. And they are each other guiding and supporting themselves through the process. So in a positive way, they are they're being positively critical of each other's business models and they're challenging each other. And so we've managed to still have that group interaction, which is crucially important. I think entrepreneurs quite can quite easily underestimate when they're going through a trial or a, a problem, they can imagine that they are the only person going through that. And the reality is we're all going through it. And it's if you ever need a time when you need to talk to other entrepreneurs and share the load, it's right now. And so nobody's more aware of that than, than we are. So most students and entrepreneurs can contact Elevator directly? They, they can. We've got um, three staff members right now who are entirely dedicated to the to the students who are starting businesses right now across all the universities. So we have a number of students from Aberdeen University and RGU um, who are currently, you know, balking the trend and they actually want to start businesses in this time of, of tribulation, but they are not silly to do so because that this this period of time is going to be quite remarkable in terms of how it shifts the the opportunity dial, I, I suspect. Yeah, well, talking to some of my students who have graduated recently, I find that they, they, they're really struggling to get a job. So perhaps the opportunity is there for them to start a business instead. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, when, when I started, my first two or three businesses from leaving education were businesses that I started literally with nothing and, and mostly ended up with nothing. However, it was a learning experience. And now I, when I reflect on the lessons that I apply on a day-to-day basis, I recall some of the things that happened to me during those expeditions. So for a student to to, to try something, to understand what it's like to try and uh, go through a process of creation and selling and the satisfaction that comes. It, these are skills which are, if you are at a loose end, it's a, it's a great way to learn new skills in the meantime and maybe earn some more money as well. Okay, Gary, that's been fantastic advice. We have about one minute to go. Can you imagine how the world would look after lockdown? Yeah, it's, um, I remember when we closed up uh, the office, I thought it might be for two weeks. And here we are, you know, four months later or something. So we don't know what's around the corner. What, I, what I, my instinct as an entrepreneur tells me that it's at times of turbulence. It's at times when markets begin to change and shift and the, lots of businesses will sadly fail. Lots of gaps will be left. Lots of new markets will open up. This should in reality be quite an exciting time for entrepreneurs. From our, from our perspective, we see you know, a slow start. I think once furlough finishes, we might end up with a situation of many redundancies, sadly. And that, again, people will start to turn to self-employment. So I think the opportunities will be there and many people will embark upon that. So from an elevator perspective, we anticipate becoming quite busy. Um, But we just hope that the economy returns back to some kind of normality as soon as possible for everyone's sake. Well, that's a great way to end this story. Thank you very much, Gary. You're very welcome.